Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Kelby with Cough Harbor County 4-H. Today I'm going to read a story called Butterflies in the Garden. I chose this because I'm starting to see a lot of butterflies um, in my garden at home and um, I just love all the different species of butterflies and I enjoyed the uh, in-school project called Project Butterfly Wings where we learn and observe the life cycle of a butterfly. So this story is by Carol Lerner, Butterflies in the Garden. And like a lot of the books that I have, um, it shows the different, uh, or a few different species of butterflies. And this one right here, this is a painted lady. This would be the species that we would um, do during the in-school project. And also, if you're following um, the Copper County 4-H YouTube page, I'm doing this project at home through videos so we can observe the life cycle that way. It's a bright summer day and butterflies have come to the garden. Their wings flash in the sunlight as they hover over the flowers. Some butterflies flutter above the plants for a moment and then fly away. Others stay landing on the flower after another. They press their heads deep into the heart of each blossom and then move on to the next flower. What do you think they are doing? They are looking for nectar. Nectar is a sugary liquid that is made by some plants and stored deep within their flowers. It is the main food of most butterflies. Some kinds of butterflies take nectar wherever they find it and others only eat from certain kinds of flowers. And that would be an example of a monarch. A monarch is only going to eat from milkweed. First, the butterfly tastes the flower by touching it with special hairs on the end of its back legs. When it finds nectar, a long tube called a proboscis unrolls to eat to reach the nectar supply. After the butterfly has eaten, the proboscis rolls back up to a tight coil. And we can see this in this up close illustration, the proboscis. And it's a coil that stays at its head and it uncoils into this long tube when it goes to drink the nectar. It's very similar to if you put a straw in your juice or your milk and you suck the liquid through that, star, that straw, that's uh, the same motion the butterfly is making. There are so many different kinds of butterflies. They are divided into groups called families. Their shapes and colors give us hints as to what family each belongs to. Here are some you might have seen before. Swallowtail. Swallowtail, the yellow swallowtail, is actually the state insect of Virginia. And that's this butterfly here. Swallowtails are large butterflies and they are named for the tails on their wings or on the back of their wings. The tail looks like, it looks like the long fork tails of a barn swallowtail. And this one is actually called a zebra swallowtail. And sometimes we have those here um, in my yard. Whites and sulfurs are small to medium with white, yellow, or orange wings. And these are the sulfurs here. Gossamers, which are very tiny butterflies. Gossamer wings are small and colorful. Many are bright blue, red, or orange. This family includes the hair streak butterfly with thread-like tails on the back wings similar to the swallowtails. And that would be this one right here is the hair streak. Brushfoots have many members in their family. Other butterflies walk on six legs, but brushfoots use only four. Their two front legs are very small and are covered with hair like a brush. These legs are folded against their bodies. Some brush foots have dull colors, but many are bright and boldly marked. Have you guys seen any of these butterflies in your yard? Skippers are small to medium in size. Most have orange or brown coloring. Skippers are known for their thick bodies and long hooks at the end of their feelers. They are quick and darting. Invite butterflies to your own yard by planting flowers with plenty of nectar. Arrange the flowers in groups with three or more of the same kind growing very close to one another. A big splash of color will get the attention of hungry butterflies. These butterfly plants grow quickly and you can plant seeds in the spring and have flowers by summer. Or you can buy plants with some of the butterfly's favorite flowers from your garden center. Transplant them to a sunny spot in your yard. Instead of using flowers that will live just one summer, you can buy some perennial butterfly plants and they come back year after year. 
Never use poison on the plants in your garden. Poisons that kill pests will end up hurting the butterflies also. There are other ways to lure butterflies to your yard. Some like the taste of root rotting fruit, mashed up bananas, some soft overripe fruit with a little sugar or honey, and put it in the sun next to your flower garden and watch for the visitors. Some butterflies flock to wet spots on the ground to sip water from the earth. Butterflies watchers, watchers call this puddling. Make a puddle by placing a shallow pan or plate on the ground. Fill it to the brim with sand or mud and keep it wet. After a few, add a few stones for the butterflies to sit on because they have to have something to sit. They don't sit in the water. You will see some butterflies moving from plant to plant without feeding. These are females looking for places to leave their eggs. Each kind of butterfly searches for its own special kind of plant. That's called a host plant. One that will feed their young caterpillars when they hatch from the eggs. If you have the right plants for their caterpillars to eat, butterflies may lay their eggs in your yard. Some butterflies look for these garden favorites. Other kind of butterflies lay their eggs on the leaves of vegetables that you grow in your garden. And this is an example of a swallowtail and they lay their eggs on parsley. Some common weedy plants are food for many kinds of caterpillars. Do you have a sunny corner where you could let long grasses and weeds grow for the summer? And here's that milkweed with the um, monarch caterpillar on it. So that is the only plant that they use is that milkweed. They lay their eggs on it. The caterpillars eat the milkweed and then the butterfly eats the nectar from the uh, bloom. Keep your eyes on these plants on sunny days when butterflies are fine. Look over the leaves and the stems as butterflies visit and try to find these tiny eggs. You might be able to watch as the eggs hatch and grow into caterpillars. So this is showing the underside of these leaves because the butterfly lays her eggs on the under part of the leaf. She does that for a few reasons. They don't like to be hot, so sunlight hits the top of the leaf, not the bottom. The same thing with being wet. They don't like water, so the rain hits the top or the dew in the morning does, and they don't get the bottom of it. And then she's also protecting them from predators, so they can't be seen as easily. When it is old enough to leave the egg, the caterpillar wiggles out. The tiny caterpillar is an eating machine with its strong jaws. Caterpillars have the same type of jaw that we do as humans. It's called a mandible jaw. So we have a top and a bottom and they work together to chew our food. With strong jaws for chewing the plant, it grows and eats until it is too big for its skin, that exoskeleton it sheds. Then the skin splits apart and the caterpillar crawls out in a fresh new skin and goes on eating until it's time to shed its skin again. And we can see this here. And it does this for a couple of different, um, we call them instar phases. So it will do it a few times. Finally, the full grown caterpillar stops eating. It moves to a safe resting place on the plant and attaches itself there. Its skin splits for the last time, leaving the caterpillar hanging from the plant, covered by a hard, thin shell. It's making a chrysalis. It stays there for a few days or weeks, not moving, but instead its tough shell there are many beautiful changes going on inside. The caterpillar is becoming a butterfly. And at last, the shell splits open and the new butterfly emerges out. So the time period when the caterpillar is changing in that metamorphosis to a butterfly and that chrysalis, it depends on the species of butterfly for how long it's going to take for that change. Painted ladies take um, about, uh, it's a three week process from the time that they're an egg to a butterfly. It waits until its crumbled wings spread out to the full size and then the butterfly lifts off in its first flight and sails through the air in search of nectar flowers and good luck with planting your own butterfly garden. And that's something that we can do right now is to plant butterfly seeds um, for uh, flower seeds for butterflies so they can have their own garden. And there's many different ones that we can choose from. You want to make sure that you water it so you have beautiful flowers in the summer so you can observe all of our butterflies. We don't have as many out now because it is still a little cooler. A lot of our larger butterflies um, you won't see until it gets a little bit warmer, but we're seeing some that are starting to come out now. Hope you enjoyed this story and learning a little bit about the life cycle of a butterfly, and I'll see you again shortly. Thanks for joining. Bye.